to jump into looking at the last model that I illustrated, but this time in Excel. Uh, so if you haven't watched the first video, you need to go back and take a look at it because this one will, because you'll need to actually see the model that goes with this. But so here is just in Excel what we do to, to model a maximal flow model. Um, we have all of these nodes. So from node A to node A is zero, and I've just put that in black. Um, node A to node B, the capacity was 10. Node A to node C, the capacity was 2. And node A to node D, there wasn't a direct path, so that is zero. Um, again, node B to node A was 2. Node B to node B, of course, is zero. And node B to node C is 5. And node B to node D is 5, and so on. And then node D to node A, this is what we call our dummy arc. It's We just have to make the number really high to just allow the data to come through, uh, the data to come through our flow, um, our network that we illustrated in the last video. So what we first want to do is set up our variable um, variables that we're going to be able to change. So we'll just copy this table and I'm going to change the background um, here to orange and we're just going to zero all of these out for now and drag those down as well. So there are a few restrictions that we have to place on ourselves. The first restriction is, well, the, the actual amounts that flow in or out of any node can't exceed the amounts defined up here um, for the different capacities. You can't exceed your capacity. The other uh, restriction we need to have is that flow coming into an, all of the flow coming into a node has to also flow out. And let me just peek at something here. Yep. Okay, so we have over here, and we're just going to make some intermediate calculations. Um, so this is the total out. This represents the total out flowing out of node A. So from node A to node A, plus node A to node B, plus node A to node C, plus node A to node D. Um, so that's just that nice little addition problem, which you can just easily represent as a sum. And we'll select those. And since these are intermediate calculations, we'll just color those purple. And we'll give it some white, back, white text so you can actually read it. And then um, we also have the total amount flowing in. And we have from uh, into node A, from node A is zero. So, so here, again, this just same kind of thing. Into node A, from node A, plus into node A, from node B, plus into node a from node C plus into node A from node D. And that's just the sum. And again, this is an intermediate calculation, so we'll just make that nice and pretty and we'll drag it across. So now we just need to set up our constraints. So we'll just say flow balance. Um, node A to node D, and we have total in, total out, difference, which this is our, uh, the blue on our French flag. No, nope, not the purple. There we go. Let's do blue. And then the red cells over here for our French flag. And so that is just going to be our, what we've defined up here, our net flow has to be zero. So everything coming in to any node also has to go out. 
So we'll just um, set that to an absolute reference, which it's not working with the nice little F4 in this version of Excel. So we'll just type it in directly with dollar signs and we'll drag that down. Now these have to be equal. And uh, what our French flag over here, the, the blue cells are going to be, um, it's the total in minus the total out. And those just come, again, the total in just comes from up here, um, coming into node A, coming into node B, coming into node C, coming into node D. And then uh, coming out of node A, and so on. And we're just going to color these purple. Oh, not red. Purple. With a nice little white background. And then our maximal flow, which is what we're going to maximize, is just going to be... Um, yeah, let's just color it green so we have our nice pretty green cell. That is just going to be our dummy arc, um, what we actually choose for the dummy arc, so D to A. Um, so then we just need to uh, use solver to set this up and then solve. So our, um, our objective is there, that maximal flow cell, and we're going to say we're going to maximize it by changing these cells, and please just ignore the data that's already in the solver. We're just going to get rid of it and replace it with this. So here's our variable cells, which it didn't like because it put it in the wrong place. So let's do that again. I love technology sometimes. So again, our variable cells are here. And there are two constraints, we're, two sets of constraints that we're worried about. The first one is the one I mentioned earlier, the first one I mentioned earlier, which is just the fact that um, the variable cells that we choose have to be less than or equal to, less than or equal to, the values that we've defined above up here. And you'll notice we set a really high number in that D to A just to make sure that we're not constraining that. Everything else is going to be constraining the number that we find for the maximum flow, but that act, that value won't constrain it because we know that number is well beyond what anything can what can actually flow through this. So let's just say okay for that set. Um, I'm just double checking here. See. F14 is less than C to F8. Okay, and we'll add one more, which is this set here, this difference uh, of the total in minus the total out for each of the nodes has to be equal to this. So everything that comes in must go out. And we use a simplex LP uh, method to solve it. And let's just click solve. And you will notice that as we reasoned through it earlier in the last video, what we the answer we got was 12. Here, the answer is 12 as well. Mm -hmm.